All right, so today is starting with price. This will be a couple day thing because um, you do have kind of where price comes from, and then you have kind of what people do to price afterwards. So good way to think about price is this is, in essence, the invisible hand of the economy, especially in a free economy, in a free market economy. And so, yeah, we'll just uh, dive into it. So price is pretty much this is a short definition. The monetary value of a good or a service. So you go to the store, you know, something is $15, something is $20, something is $19.99. That is the monetary value that is placed on that good or service. Just whatever it may be. Now, prices, from a larger economic standpoint, service signals. When prices are high, people are naturally going to buy less. When gas was shot up to six, seven, eight dollars a gallon, people did not purchase as much gas than they did previously, um, or they will, uh, in some cases, price rise for one thing. Someone may go somewhere else to find that to find a product that meets that needs. So, like for example, you have like you know those crazy expensive cars like a Maserati or something. Not a lot of people can afford those. So people go somewhere else to purchase their vehicle. They'll get a Kia, they'll get a Honda, they'll get a Ford, they'll get a Mitsubishi, they'll get something like that. Um, they'll find a substitute. Low prices, people will naturally buy more of it. And they'll kind of load up now and wait for you know when the prices go up, especially if they think the prices are going to go up. Stocks. This kind of pl plays into that. When the stock price is high, people are naturally going to buy less stock because they can't afford to buy a lot of stock. When prices are low for a stock, people will buy up all the stocks then. Uh, so what a firm will do or a company, if they're providing anything, if prices are too low for something, like people just are naturally not going to want to buy it, um, which drives the pot price down. If prices are too low for a product and they can't make money on it. So like for example, let's say it costs $20 to make something, but they can only sell it for 10 bucks. Well, if they were to make that product and sell that product, they would lose $10. So what they're, what a business or a firm will do is they're going to look at making something else. They're going to free up the resources, making that other product and making a product that will give them a profit. Now, the advantages of prices, it's neutral. Prices are a result of competition. Both buyers and sellers can live with that price. Money is impartial. The prices are impartial. Um, because again, anybody can go off and say, well, like for example, why is, you know, this vid this picture up here, why is the Xbox One $299? Well, because it's in competition with the PlayStation, it's in competition with PC, it's in competition with Nintendo. So Xbox can't walk around and say, yeah, we're going to sell this for $1,000 because people are just going to be like, well, screw that. I'm going to go buy another console or find a substitute for my gaming wants and needs. And also it's flexible. Unforeseen events will come and go. The Xbox may... You know, it started off more expensive as time went on, as the market was flooded, as people, you know, could buy a refurb job. They would lower, Microsoft lowered the price accordingly as it went on. And, you know, this affects consumption of resources as well, because what's Microsoft going to do as the price goes down more? Because, okay, it's been around, it's not new anymore. They're going to take the resources that go to making the Xbox One and making the maybe the Series X. They will you know, invest it in other things. Same thing with PlayStation. Same thing with an automobile. People don't like the certain body style anymore for an automobile. Okay, people aren't buying it. Okay, the company is going to go... We'll make... We're going to make adjustments. We're going to... 
instead of making this one vehicle that nobody likes, we're going to ro roll out something that people will like. Um, and this is, you know, this is what, how a company kind of looks at this. And it's familiar. Prices are familiar. They're easy to understand, especially when you have things like money. Um, and again, we'll talk about money much later down the road, but again, it's easy to understand. You know, here's the thing from Kohl's shoes, $49.99 and under. We can understand that. We can understand. Okay. 50 bucks for a pair of shoes. Backpacks. Ooh, 50% off. That's easy to understand. And this allows people, you, me, everybody, allows us to make decisions very, very quickly. We can look and be like, okay, shoes are 50 bucks. That's worth it. That's not worth it. That's worth it to you. It's not worth it to me. It's worth it to me, not worth it to you. So we're able to make snap decisions very, very quickly just based on looking at price. Then we have efficiency. There's no cost to administer this. People just say, this is what we're going to make. This is how much we're going to sell it for. There's no cost to administer this. There's no government bureaucracy standing in the middle making decisions as to how we're going to do this. And this is kind of what it looks like. And this is how we get price. Here's an example of this. We talked about demand. There's a demand graph. We talked about supply. There's a supply. Now what we get, the price, where we want it, is right here. The equilibrium point. This is the price that we settle on. Or as close to this as we can in a perfect world. So what this does is this maximizes the supply and maximizes the number of people that are willing to pay for it. Because if you set the price, let me switch to a different color real quick. If you set the price right here, yeah, you may, uh, you set the price here. You're not going to be able to supply the amount of pizza because supply will be stuck right here. So you're going to have a lot of people trying to buy pizza, but you're going to run out of pizza. If you set it right here, you'll be able to supply all the pizza. You raise the price, you'll be able to supply the pizza, but nobody's going to want to buy your pizza. So the ideal, the best place where you want to aim for is getting right here where the supply and the demand meet. All the, all the possible customers you'll have will walk away happy. And then you'll turn around and you'll look back on your shelves and your shelves will be empty because you've sold everything. You won't have anything left over. Everybody's happy. And again, like think about with pizza. Are you going to want necessarily want to eat day old pizza that's been sitting on a shelf all day? No. So if you're somebody who's supplying things, you want to sell out everything. And you want nothing to be left over. And you want all the people who are waiting for your stuff, whether it be pizza or shoes, they walk away happy. So you want the intercept. You want to hit this bullseye as much as you can. Now, what's going to happen is the demand line, the supply line is constantly going to be shifting backwards, forwards, left, right. So this little target is constantly shifting. It's constantly moving. So what businesses have to do is they have to, in essence, make the best guess they can. Make the best guess they can to hit that target as close as they can every day. And that's this is what happens in an economy. It's not an easy, not, no easy solutions. No easy solutions. No easy answers. And that's about all. Peace out.